Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Saturday. It's time for our daily devotion. As you probably noticed, I'm in my office on uh, this Saturday, and that's because I just got done uh, with our Easter egg hunt across the street in Arno Park. And so we had a, a wonderful time sharing with uh, several families, probably about a hundred or so kids, I would say, maybe a little bit more than that that came through, but uh, kind of on a, a cool, brisk Saturday morning, even though it's a little sunny out, it's in the 30s, so it was a little cool out, but it was a great time. And so I'm going to take a moment to uh, pause with you as we take an opportunity to uh, just simply uh, look for God's presence in our lives today. So looking forward to sharing in this time of devotion with you. I'll say good morning to folks as you sign in on our Facebook page and and let us know that you're here. It's also going to tell me who's watching, but love the comments, so please leave those. If you're someone that watches this later on today, don't forget to leave a quick comment and say hello as well. Would appreciate you doing that. Good morning, Linda. Great to have you this morning, and good morning, Shirley. So glad both of you are here today. So our devotion for today comes out of Psalm 139. We're going to read the first 12 verses. Psalm 129, so if you want to find that in your Bibles. Of course, we'll be reading out of the Upper Room Devotion for today, which is Saturday the 23rd of March, and we're going to be reading our source of prayer. So, hard to believe that tomorrow is Palm Sunday already. Of course, Easter is probably one of the earliest time frames that, uh, that the uh, Lenten Easter season can be on the church calendar. Next week, Next year, it's going to be closer to one of the later times on the church calendar, but which will be nice. Maybe our Easter egg hunt next year will be just a little warmer. So, But we had a good crowd. Saw lots of familiar faces, met some new folks as well. So that was awesome. As I said, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12. Just waiting to see if anybody else says good morning real quick. We'll probably have folks that'll join us as we get along through here, but here's our opening prayer. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. All right. Psalm 139. The inescapable God to the leader of David, a psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and have known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Our devotion writer today is Keith Honeyman. Keith is from West Cape, South Africa. His focus verse comes out of Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. It says, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And here is Keith's devotion for today. It is six o'clock on a cold winter morning, and I am in darkness. The power will be off for more than two hours, as our national power grid is no longer sufficient to supply the needs of our population. To eke out and share the available power, we have rotational power outages known as rolling blackouts or load shedding. But the world outside is not completely dark. 
In the street, the bright lights of cars move boldly through the darkness. These vehicles carry within themselves a power source that constantly regenerates. I liken these vehicles to faithful Christians who relentlessly move forward in an often dark world. When the power of the world is no longer sufficient to sustain us, we have a continuous and never failing power source available to us, the light of Christ. We carry Christ light with Christ love within ourselves and regenerate it through scripture reading, worshiping, and loving others, even as we move forward in the darkness. The thought for the day is, because of my faith, I will always have light in the darkness. Um, Margaret and I lived in the Lee Summit area years ago, uh, had a house out in what's called Longview Farm area. Um, and we had a, a couple of different winters where we had some pretty significant kinds of ice storms and things like that, and it knocked the power out. And I remember that um, our house sat on the south um, corner of a cul-de-sac uh, near the south entrance of um, Longview Farms. And um, there was a row of houses that were built after we moved in uh, on the um, uh, west side of Samson as you go through uh, down through there. And um, it, it's fascinating that we lost power, but none of those houses did. And luckily for us, um, our neighbors let us plug into their exterior wall outlet, run a long extension cord uh, so that we could run a space heater. And um, a couple of, we didn't open our refrigerator or anything like that. It was so cold out. We didn't, our, our food wasn't going to thaw out anytime soon anyway, and it was cold in the house. But the other thing too is, is uh, we had a fireplace that was a gas fireplace. And we could use our gas fireplace even when the electricity was out. We could still produce light even when we had no electricity. Um, and we did that as well. And, and it's kind of uh, fascinating to really think about that. Um, we, we really are predicated in many ways towards a kind of a negative view of the world. And that's primarily because so much of what we hear is oriented towards that. It's oriented towards negative, which... Um, metaphorically also means darkness, so it's oriented towards dark. And because of that, we kind of get a sense that life is much like that. And we know that many people live in circumstances and situations where it is also, um, we would say, darkness around them. Not, not always joyful, but rather um, unhappy kinds of circumstances. And so we must remember that what is inside of us is the love of Christ, and that is light to the world. And even though we may find ourselves dwelling in this, we still have an opportunity to shine light, to shine goodness into the world around us. As the thought for the day says, because of our faith, we always will be light in the darkness. We need to remember that, because we too easily can give in to uh, the dark that's around us, the negativity around us. And maybe we need to figure out how to each day be reminded of what is good and what is loving, what is uh, been given within us as this light of Christ. And maybe it, uh, it has to do with scripture reading or worshiping, whatever it is. Uh, maybe it's changing the channels that you listen to and uh, finding yourself listening to, listening to something that's maybe more positive and encouraging. Um, I need to do that more. I'm, I'm, I'm discovering that, that if I find myself watching too much news or reading too much on social media, that I can find myself uh, kind of more on the negative tone of what's going on. And so I'm trying to figure out how to balance that with some things that remind me of, of light that's in the world and remind me that I am light as well. And so I want you to think about that. Number one, what is your source of light? Uh, in your life? And number two, how are you sharing light in the world around us? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So source of light, we praise you and thank you for all the beacons that you place along our path to direct us and how you lead us through your never failing light and love. Amen. Well, friends, thanks so much for being here today. By the way, good morning, Barbara. Great to have you today. I'm glad all of you uh, took an opportunity to join. Appreciate you being here. Would remind those of you that watch later on, don't forget, leave a quick comment and say hello. It would be nice to hear from you today as well. Uh, take an opportunity as you do each day to pause and pray for one another. I'm praying for you. Please take a moment to pray for me. 
as we conclude today, you are free to feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. Maybe one of your family and friends will join in our devotion time with us. Don't forget, tomorrow is Palm Sunday, so here at St. John's, we'll have one service tomorrow at 1045. It is our Confirmation Sunday as well as our Choir Cantata. So it's going to be a busy day for us, packed into that hour or so uh, of our worship time. I'm looking forward to it um, and celebrating with families and sharing with them and the confirmation of their teenagers and uh, the presentation of our cantata this year by our choir. I'm looking forward to all of that. So if you uh, have a chance, come join us uh, live in our sanctuary at 1045. If not, hope you join us online because we'll be live streaming as well. Otherwise, I am praying that God's peace and grace be upon you the rest of this day. Thanks for being here, and I'll look forward to being back with you on Monday. Bye, friends.